Hi there, my name is Paul Kajeji. I'm a freelance editor working in Sydney, Australia. As part of my work, I often have to create a quick montage of stills for corporate, wedding or in-house videos. The brief always calls for something slick, elegant and eye-catching, but the turnaround time is often quite short. I found that CoreMelt produces a number of plugins which allows me to do in minutes what used to take me hours to produce from scratch in After Effects or Motion. As you can see in this example uh, from a recent job I completed, I've created a quick 3D slideshow, furnished it with a lower third over which I can place a title. I'm going to show you how to create this effect completely within Final Cut Pro using CoreMelt's Cardflow and Plasma Ribbon plugins. So let's uh, fire up Final Cut Pro. I'm using version 7.01, but if you've installed the plugins, uh, know that they also work with version 6, as well as After Effects CS3 and CS4, and even Motion. You'll notice that if you open up your effects folders in Final Cut, CoreMelt has already populated the folders with the appropriate plugins. I'm going to select the Card Flow plugin from Video Generator's C2 Image Flow Instant Montages. I drag that down to my timeline so I can begin. Now to get the fastest results out of these plugins, it's important to set up your RT settings like so. Switch over to Unlimited RT, make sure that you set your playback frame rate to dynamic, and switch off Scrub High Quality. There are a few ways to get pictures to replace the placeholders in card flow. You can select a pre-existing picture folder off of your hard drive, or create an image well from assets in your Final Cut project. You can also tell card flow to only select images, movies, or all of the above. I'm going to select images, for starters, from a pre-existing folder. I locate my folder, and it loads the pictures directly from there. I can scrub through the effects and see it's done the job fairly nicely. I can bump up the amount of images which I get to view over the duration of the generated clip as you can see here, but I'm just going to knock it back to 4 for this demonstration as it's only uh, 10 seconds long. Now a feature which is universal over all CoreMelt plugins is the global settings. As with the RT settings, it's good to have a look at these around the start of your project. In the General tab, I like to tick Force Down Res Preview, and in the Motion Blur tab, I like to select On With High Quality. This means that Motion Blur won't play back when you're previewing, but when you do a final render, it will be added to the clip, as you can see here. Cardflow, like most plugins, comes with some neat presets, which I'll briefly show you. When selected, hit the refresh button and the preset will be applied. Now you can also make your own adjustments to these settings, such as the position and rotation of the camera angle. Because these are not true 3D generators, it is important to see the limits this particular plugin has. For example, if I rotate the camera too low, you can see how the reflections stick to the assets, but this breaks the illusion that there is in fact a reflective floor. Now all of these adjustments are keyframable, so you can animate the camera swing and position over time should you wish. Before I continue, I'll quickly show you how to add images to your image well from assets already in your project. So select image wells from the drop down. You'll see the control window now has four default placeholders for images to be dropped in. You can have up to eight images in an image well, but for the sake of the demo, I'll reduce this to just four. You just simply drag and drop files into the image well from your bin. I'm adding here one footage file to illustrate that the plugin is not restricted to just stills. I can now play it uh, rendered, and you'll notice the footage slide plays perfectly well. So I'm happy with how my montage is looking, so now it's time to add a nice lower third to play over it. Back to my generators folder inside the glows and blurs bin, 
I select the plasma ribbon generator and drag it down to my timeline. I'm going to drag it uh, away from uh, the previous clip just to illustrate how this works before I add it over the top of the montage. Scrubbing along the clip, you can see exactly what this plugin does. See, it generates a nice organic looking light ribbon which animates over time. As with all other CoreMelt plugins, there are a few presets as well as the option to save out your own custom preset. So I'll begin by selecting the lower third preset. It's quite close to what I wish to achieve, so it's a good starting point. Scrolling down, I go to my source options and here you'll see you've got a variety of mask options as well as the option to generate the ribbon from an image dumped into the image well. I'm going to select one that looks sufficiently random and now I'll adjust some of the wave properties, the X and Y heights, so I can get it a little flatter and finally adjust the position so it won't block out too much of the action when it's finally applied to it. Now I'll just adjust some of the alpha start and end settings And now that I'm happy with it, I click on the plus sign next to the presets rollout to create a custom preset. I call it lower third pres. And there you can see it in my drop down menu, ready to be used for future videos. Finally, I want a way to bring on the lower third, so I'm going to use a core melt transition called light wash. I've now applied it and scrubbing through it you can see exactly what it does. But you can also see that it doesn't treat the alpha very well in preview. But never fear, once rendered it's extremely smooth. So again you can see that even the transitions have some presets and the option to create your own. I'm going to tweak some settings of this preset, the angle of the light, the length and width of the beam. And now I'm going to save this new preset out as low diag. Seeing it rendered, you can now see how the alpha problem has completely disappeared and the transition on the, on the effect looks just as I wanted. Just before I place my lower third onto the photo montage, I'm going to adjust the position of the card flow effect so that the lower third doesn't mask scout the subtle reflections of the assets. About uh, negative 75 should do the trick. And now I place the lower third on the layer above, check it, and render it out. So here is the completed comp. I simply added a standard text asset which I blur on and the composition is complete. Now in real world hours, this effect took me only around 20 minutes to produce. The client was happy and I got to book in some extra work this week, which I otherwise would have had to knock back. If you have any further questions or comments, feel free to post them on the Creative Cow CoreMelt forum. The CoreMelt team will be happy to provide any further information you might require. Thanks for watching everyone.